Hi guys. Yep. You guys have been requesting the uh, Peugeot 3008 for a long, long time. Sorry that I haven't, uh, I just haven't got the time or just did not get it. Lah. Now, I've been looking through this car, both inside and out. I believe, right, this is the one car throughout this year that I've driven whereby I believe uh, it is the biggest argument between the design department and the engineering department in a lot of things that I notice. So I'm going to go through the exterior first and, and roughly explain what, 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 what I mean by that, all right? I'm going to turn you around. Um, okay, first of all, you look at the headlamps, okay? Now, designers, when they design cars, they just sit on their desk and then all they need to do is just to draw, right? So they can have a field day designing however they want it to be. But I believe the bosses who both the engineering department and the design department reports to kind of cite the design department more. Why? Look at this part. You just look at this part. This is part of the bumper. Now, the designer might be very easy to just draw like this and then give this a hint, a kink, right? A major kink, okay? And then normally when it comes to productionizing the design, they might uh, rationalize it a bit. And then they discuss, you know, hey, come on, lah, this is stupid, man. This is so tight. The tolerances, how do we achieve this? Can your kink be smaller? Ah, so that it's easier to make the headlamp and then to fit it in. Or another way, you really want this? Okay, this part, there will be a cut line that runs across so that this forms a part of the housing. Okay, this example can be seen on the Lexus LC500. They want a crazy thing that runs in from inside the headlamp, but when it comes to productionizing it, they have to rationalize it. They have to make do with some compromise. But look at this guy here. This piece of headlamp, that ends here, not, not this thin part, it is actually one piece. They didn't even do it with two pieces. They didn't even tell the headlamp guy or the supplier to produce this part as well so that they can have the bumper cutting the line here. And, you know, but this thing sits inside the headlamp. So this tolerance, very difficult to achieve. And the design department won. Okay. Now look at, of course you need some little words in there just to add to the sophistication but I don't know what that means. Someone, um, is, it, is it luminosity or something like that? But anyway, the headlamps look good. And this car, from pictures, it looks a little bit oddball but the real car makes it look really, really interesting because there are so many little, little design details that caught my eye, you know. Um, of course, this is a compromise in between you see BMWs they have a line that cuts across right but this one is not so obvious I would say but of course the op the optimal would be having it here but now you have pedestrian crash test and all that you to score well and to achieve this effect this concave effect so this part cannot be too slanted in if it is slanted in more that means it doesn't jut out like that then perhaps they will be able to move the cut line over here okay but i mean it's a good looking car it is a good looking car nonetheless okay so uh i think peugeot this round really nails the design because they put so much effort in it this part here is noticeable from the driver's position because this part is high okay so it's very easy to navigate same like porsches where this part bulges up and then after the headlamp, after the crazy headlamp, they have this. This is more for garnishing purposes. You see, when it comes to manufacturing, again, if they just have this metal part meet the bonnet part, they don't need to spend money on this part. But they do it nonetheless because the designer draw it in. Because the designer wants to achieve this. This lighting effect that runs all the way there. And then the signal lights actually travels up like that. Like those brand new Audi A8s, you know, it runs like that, the, the signal lights, okay? Then we come to the side here, here you can see air travels past here, some aerodynamic design, they didn't end up with a very small side mirror, so I like that. And then look at bottom down here, they have this kink that goes up with a chrome panel there, and I think 
they really put in a lot of effort. It's super oddball, but in real life, the car looks exciting. Okay, I like how it looks. A lot of designers try to design some kink over here, the back here again, but they do it at the right spot. The spot where it doesn't affect visibility. It doesn't create a weird thing here that when you sit inside, it's like, eh, why the line like that? But it slowly graces up, and then the kink is here. And then this part here, this top part here, this again is another way to spend money on building the car so that it looks good. A chrome strip, it's not chrome, it almost is the setting chrome material, but it doesn't feel as smooth as the usual setting chrome material, okay? So it runs all the way here, and then this part ends up like that. So in terms of design, I think this car nails it. It is unique enough that it doesn't look like anything out there, uh, but it's not like super crazy oddball, but it's good looking. Everybody who looks at it is like, wow, this is odd, but I like it, you know? So there are some, I think some aerodynamic stuff here because these lines, I can touch them, I can feel them, okay? Now come to the rear. So a lot of people say like some tiger's claw or whatever, I don't know. This is reminiscent to the uh, previous 3008 or the first generation 3008 where the rear has this thing there, uh, the facelift one, okay? Not the, the strawberry lights that came before this. And this part here, for lightweight purposes, the boot, even this part, are made of plastic, which in mass manufacturing, I believe plastic could be slightly costlier than metal. Because metal just stamp, 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 stamp. But I, 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 I I can't be sure. Oh yeah, this car is European car of the year. Okay. Now look at the boot. Nicely sized. It doesn't match the uh, crazy capacity of the CRV. The CRV is just big. It's just it's just a super duper big SUV. Okay. That someone some some people might like it, but for me, I think it's a bit too family man. The CRV. This one hits the right spot. And uh, I like the fact that this is a false floor. Let me show you. Take out the backs. This guy here can be lowered. Okay? To increase the height. Because certain luggages, you might just lack that much height to make it stand. When it stands, you can fit more things in. Okay? Uh, I don't think the ski hatch... Maybe I can open from there, I'm not sure yet, okay? But, boom, one touch. Now, you can see there's a, there is a, shit, I lost that word. There's a step there, right? But when you raise the false floor, you get a flat loading bay, which means you can slide things in. So that's pretty convenient, okay? There are some hook points there. The uh, Isofix theater, teeters are there. There's a light here, 12 volt socket. Um, there about it, okay? I see this here, but I wonder what is it for? Um, can I lower this and put it there or how? This one, I have to take off the strap and take out this thing. Uh, which now I'm a bit malas. Okay, I'll figure it out later. Anyway, the, the seats can fold. It's uh, 40, 60 folding. Let's go inside. Oh, there's a spare tire down here as well. So, just now I was, just now I did something because I kind of pressed the uh, electronic release and then I waited. I think that's a, that's a thing where I, when you sort of drive a car that looks like a premium car, you thought that it has a power boot, but this one doesn't have a power boot, all right? Uh, I think not many has power boot in this segment. Let's go inside. That's the party piece. I'm gonna tell you tell you more later. So the seats are you know powered, memory, and it looks good. Of course, it's black because Malaysians just wanted black seats. But I think if it is red or cream, it would look really really good. Nonetheless, the contrast stitching makes it look good, and the bolstering is nice. Okay, it's comfortable. the The leather is soft enough. Uh, not the softest Napa, but it's smooth, smoother than the usual leather that we felt from most Japanese cars. Okay, it's nice. There's a combination here, fabric, some tough fabric, which is good because this is where always you come up and then you rub it here. And then this part, you can extend it. 
not many cars in this segment does that okay let's come inside here now this interior I mean this interior is more exciting looking than the new Audi A R8's interior I kid you not let's start the car somehow I don't know why I need to long press it to start it okay now first thing I want you to look at is this material of course there's the ambient lighting optic optics running up here can you see it and it looks really good at night it the light actually radiates off this concave surface because it's concave towards in inside the lights actually travel down which looks really really good now this material uh, is definitely fabric but it also feels like jeans material which I think I've never touched this before in a in a car and I and I think it's very good that the French I mean they have a fashion industry right to to do this to even design this in and this is a good example of what I mentioned a nicely designed door panel where you have a mixture of different materials setting chrome handles which feels really good when you want to open it, it feels solid okay and then you have this nice material here this part is not leather but it's you see this kind of plastic right you can't poke it in it's not the super soft one but it's not the, the rough plastic material as well so it's nice and this part is leather clad this part this entire part so the part where your arms are rested against is covered in leather and it's contrast stitching as well matching the seats and this feels really smooth this feels like those smooth Napa leather, but I'm not sure if it's real leather, but it doesn't feel like those PU as well. So it's really nice, okay? Uh, almost full-length door panel. Sorry for that. Uh, but you can't put large bottles here, but you can put a lot of stuff because the height between this and this is really tall. And the speaker is here, and then you can put your bottles and all that, okay? Let's close the door. The aircon vents. Now, again, the dashboard. Another big argument between designers and engineers, I believe, because the designers just sit there again and draw. I want this to look like that, you know, I want this, all this, and then the, the engineer will be like, holy, how do I build this? How do I design the molding parts, where to meet, where to fit it, you know? It's not easy to achieve something like this, okay? It's super flamboyant, and I think more car makers should be more daring in its design. Now, the aircon vents. The whole vent is setting chrome covered okay it looks really good i think this is the best looking interior of its class it beats everybody else in terms of interior design and the mixture of materials this part here i keep running my fingers across it because it feels so good it feels so smooth and nice i love it okay and these buttons is like again it's it's like what I said, an argument between designers and engineers because this part, the edge here, is a little bit sharp. But to achieve the effect of milled metal, you have to end it that way. If it's too rounded, it feels like something that is chrome from plastic, right? And, and that's how you, you make people feel wow. You wow everybody with this interior. And I believe they did design this first. Then they figure out what to put there because they want to achieve the design. They want to achieve it. And kudos for car makers who do that. I mean, too many car makers are being too pragmatic recently. And I, th I think the industry needs car makers that are daring, are uh, putting in 200% of their effort in building something that is unique. Okay, This is a 12-inch LCD, but the luminosity is great. The contrast is great. The, uh, the graphics, the graphics movement is not as seamless as the one in Audis, but don't forget this is the Peugeot, right? This is not a particularly expensive car. And there's ambient lighting running down here as well. So that makes it really, really cool. Again, design, they put the buttons here just so they want to fit the design. They don't want to mess with it. They don't want to suddenly put a stick out here or put a button here and all that. They, they just don't want that. They want it to look seamless. And you as the owner figure your way out which you, you might take one week or a few days, but after you figure it out, it's there, okay? The steering. This has got to be the most interesting steering you have ever put your hands onto. It's also the smallest steering wheel in the industry. 
it's not even flat bottom. It's flat here and flat here, okay? Because all you're holding is this, and this part here actually makes it really good in terms of visibility towards that. And I love it. I never thought I would get accustomed to it. But after I drove it, because of its small size, getting in and out of the car, especially with my gigantic thighs, it's perfect. And the buttons all here, I just find that Peugeot is super daring. They are a company that is super duper daring when it comes to design this round, you know. They are not a premium car maker, but come on, man, they just don't care. They just go all out this round, okay? Even look at the aircon vents. They make it slim and small. So what that means is that when you have a lot of air that wants to gush out from a small outlet, you will have a louder volume, slightly louder volume. A lot of cars does that, but this is not the loudest, but I believe in, in other Japanese cars where they have we have regular vents, right? It won't be as loud for a volume that is only at two. Okay. Now, look at the sides. Uh, this part here, this aircon vent is is like is floating because they don't care. They just move it all in as if this entire console on top is floating. Okay. And this one is is unavoidable. This cut line because they need to fit this screen there. Okay. So they. they they can't just stuff that thing, that thing in, right? They need something that can be removed so that when it comes to servicing or changing the wiring and all that, it, it works, okay? In terms of the screen, it's very responsive. Um, but in terms of the contrast of the screen, it it, it feels a bit TFT-ish. Um, not the highest resolution, but it's all right. It, I think it matches, uh, it matches cars from... 2000 the high-end luxury cars from 2012 2013 that kind of resolution this one is really new new age you can see the luminosity between the two of them this one is super bright this one maybe there is there is a way to to adjust it but i have to figure my way around it uh brightness okay is it at its brightest oh it's minimum sorry cockpit backlight uh where's the backlight doesn't look any different, okay? But it's visible. The uh, the contrast and all that is all right. And it's very responsive. And I like the graphics, you know. They, they put some effort to the graphics. So, yeah. Kudos to that. Okay. I want all on. So, all the lights will come out. So, another thing that I find this car super interesting. They have this ultra sophisticated traction control system. Now, this car is front wheel drive. But they have road mode, snow mode, off-road. That means, right, I mean, I think they are quite confident in it. This, you can only see this or the hill descent on proper 4x4 cars, right? But this guy has it because apparently they brought a front-wheel drive 3008-like model to Dakar Rally to showcase this technology because software is so clever now that even you are a front-wheel drive car they're able to tackle this sort of terrain okay now storage let me show you how much effort they put in and how other car makers should learn okay before i come here this compartment is really deep fantastic i can put two large size phones there but there's only one usb port i mean two but there's only one and then a 12 volt socket there okay so for those of you you want to plug more you need to buy like a secret light uh, USB port thingy okay now this part look at this if you take this out if you take out this you see how deep is this can you see that can you see me fisting the car <laughs> and actually the the cold air from aircon actually flows out here so this also serves as like a semi cooler box okay but ladies, I think your, your dinner bags, your small handbags, your longchamp, you can stuff it in. And this is amazing. Why, why so few car makers care about ladies? I mean, they need a place to put their, you know, moderate size handbag. They can stuff it in and then close it. So you don't need to end up with that Myvi hook thingy. The Myvi hook thingy, right? If the Myvi has a big console in the middle, it would, they don't need this, okay? And then this one works like those BMWs, you know, the 5 Series, 6 Series, they have this. Leather clad as well, very comfortable. Doubles as an armrest and it's a lid as well. So up here, you don't get sunglass holder. 
but this one is there. This is the high quality one, so it's nice. Okay, let's move to the back. I love the dashboard. I love the interior of this car. Very well thought. Very, very well thought. Come on back here. Put this up. Okay, there are rear aircon vents and it's not mounted low because this thing itself is quite high because they want to achieve that kind of storage, okay? So the aircon vents rather okay in terms of where it's pointed. It's not like super low, just pointed at your balls. All right, now let's come to the back. Uh, let me show you the headroom. Like a lot of European cars, you need to lift this up because it's mandated that you, they force you to lift it up so that it's anti-whiplash. Okay, when it's not lifted up, when someone hit you from behind, your, your head might jerk to the back and then you get whiplash, okay? I am five foot 11. I have plenty headroom, one palm of headroom. In terms of knee room, it's not class leading. It cannot, nobody can fight the CRV. Even the X5 cannot fight the CRV because the CRV is just crazy spacious, okay? But can I do this? Barely. I can barely do this. This is somewhat about there with the, uh, I think it's somewhat like the Honda Civic, okay? It has a flat floor. floor. Let me turn you around. Look at the floor. Sorry, uh, very slow, DJI. It's flat, okay? But if I'm seated in the middle, you can see my foot actually have to step on top of the rail. So the, if the rail is shorter, I would have been able to put my foot there. So as a middle passenger, I couldn't put here, but I can somewhat step there because it doesn't have a huge center tunnel. I do not have an idea of what this, what purpose this serve. I find nothing there and I don't know why this is there, but it's just there. Okay, there's a 12 volt socket here. And unfortunately, unlike the 2008, this round in terms of, because of pricing and all that, they have to make do without the hit, the, the panoramic roof. Some Malaysians don't like it because they feel that it's very hot. And um, uh, I myself love panoramic roof. So this one doesn't have it, unfortunately. Now rear visibility from here is weird because from here, it feels tight from, from what I'm seeing seated, seated back here. But somehow when I was driving, it's all right. I don't know why. Okay, when I was driving, it's all right. You can go drive it in, in, in showrooms. It's, it's weirdly okay. Ah, sorry, I need to drop this. Ah, never mind, my fun. Okay, armrest. Uh, nothing much. Okay, the ski pass-through is there. So you can pass long objects with two persons still sitting there. This is important if the if the rear seats are not 40, 20, 40. If the rear seats are 40, uh, 60, 40, you better have this because when you have a long object you, and you have four passengers, you can still pass it through. All right? So the cup holders are here. Rather simple, uh, but I can no longer complain about this because the Cayenne is also one cushion and two holes. So I cannot complain about this anymore. But the guy that scores this area is really the Mazda CX-5 where you have the cup holders fold out and then you can open this and it's covered in there and then it's, it's uh, there are USB ports and all that, okay? But look at the front. Just look at the front. This is a fantastic dashboard. I think this should get design of the year, not just European car of the year. It should receive design of the year as well because this... This dashboard is not only functional, it's beautiful, it's fantastic. And if someone were to film minor Minority Report and they call me, Bobby, do you have a car that can pretend is 2050? This dashboard fits in the future. Okay. And Subaru, Subaru, if you're watching this, please, Subaru, look, look. And uh, Nissan X Trail, please look. Learn, please. Proper interior design, proper, proper. All right, so yeah, man, let's go for a drive. And um, this car's design is really something. Oh, something to add. Remember, I mentioned every time you got up a car, two focal points is the steering wheel and the gear shift. Look at this gear shifter, man. Look at this. I know it's not as luxurious as the Volvo one, but. This looks like a future version of BMW's uh, electronic shifter. 
but in terms of ergonomics, it's just okay because I was expecting, I don't know how to hold it at first. I was like, should I do this or how, you know, because I have a BMW and, I, and my hands are doing that. But so I think it's a bit of getting used to. So uh, yeah, and there are pedal shifters. So I, I like the interior. Okay, let's go for a drive. Hi guys, let's go drive. First off, the steering wheel. This steering wheel feels like, oops, sorry, mister. Okay, normally for SUVs, right, they will not have steering wheels that are so fast. That means this steering wheel, if I hold my hand up 100 plus, the front end, as if you can make it do this because it's a very fast steering even when on the move and I don't drink and drive guys but you can 100 plus at drive <laughs> now performance 1.6 turbo this is a familiar engine the Prince engine um, but of course they updated it uh, it's making 167 horsepower and it's still 240 Newton meters of torque now when you think about this segment Peugeot is rather early in turbocharging it and then after that you have the Ford Kuga which is no longer available uh, Mazda you have a 2 liter which in terms of performance cannot match these guys the turbocharged boys but then you have a 2.5 which uh, in terms of road tax if I'm not wrong, a 2.5 liter car's road tax is 10 times the road tax of this car. This car, 1.6, should be 90 ringgit. Um, the Honda CRV, 1.5, should be about there as well. But a 2.5 should be 900 ringgit, if I don't remember wrongly, or it was 800. Now let's talk about suspension. I think you guys are familiar with this stretch of road, which is really, really bad. I think the pliancy is good. The pliancy is good is because of the very really, really good soundproofing. Why? Because I can feel it, but I don't hear it. And that makes a big difference. Okay? Certain cars, they, they are like magic carpet. They absorb it up. But this car, I sort of feel it just now on, on, on those really, really bad roads. But I don't hear them. And that makes a big difference. But is this right jittery? It's not. Because even though it has an 18-inch wheel, it has a super thick profile tire, proper SUV thick profile tires. And that really helps in terms of comfort, especially on highway. Uh, transmission, this is a familiar transmission again, six speed transmission, which I think in terms of top converter speed, uh, speak, right? If your car is not super powerful, I think a six speeder works well. I wonder why there are no seven speeder top converters because I only hear eight, eight Eight speeder top converters, six speeder top converters. And anyway, um, the gear shifts are all right, but in slow speed, in city traffic, slow speed, I can feel it shifting. I can feel it shifting. But in terms of highway driving, it's very well mapped out for highway driving. So you can see, I mean, the Europeans they always think about that highway part, right? Because Europeans travel. The Brits will drive down to Spain, France, Germany, and the Germany will go to Poland. Sorry for that joke. <laughs> and then that's the habit. So if you're buying, I mean, sidetrack a bit, if you're buying a recon car from UK and you see a three-year-old car with a mileage of 12,000, don't believe that nonsense. Because we know the Europeans, they drive around to travel around Europe. It's a ha habitual thing. Every summer, they will go down to the south of France and all that. Okay? Now, sorry, Pasa Malam. Yeah, this is the road I always drive, but if you see that there's a Pasa Malam, that means it's Friday. Okay? Every Friday, Pasa Malam, see, oh, the new CX-5. Nemesis. Okay? In terms of seating space, the space available in the rear and the boot, I think this is slightly larger than the CX-5 but performance I'm happy with this performance it is uh, very nippy and the steering is accurate and it's a car that handles but you can feel the weight 
you really can feel the weight pushing okay the soundproofing is impressive Ooh, a bunny okay let's try whether the steering is good enough for oops they closed the road sorry i almost ran into another car i thought this is the way out so they close it okay so that was a u-turn point Yes, look at that, that's the GLC. Can you see the GLC up front? It's a beautiful mid-size SUV. Same size as this car. It's beautiful, it's elegant. But I think this guy is more exciting when it comes to his interior. When you step out from a GLC, from a Mercedes showroom, and then you felt that, why do I not have 280,000 ringgit to buy the GLC 200? And then you step into this interior, you'll be like, ah. So, even though it's 100, 140,000 cheaper, yeah, but you don't lose out a lot in terms of this interior. Of course, that's a premium car, that's a Mercedes Benz, okay, you get the whole Mercedes Benz experience. But what I mean is, imagine you step out from that and then you go into an X Trail or a Forester or a. Uh, what other car in this segment? Sorry, navigate a bit. Yeah, the X-Trail or Outlander, and then you go inside, right? There is a significant difference between, in terms of, you understand that, oh yeah, I went down to one segment lower, okay? But, I just, why I stay, say that, I just want to remind that this segment, the CX-5 and this guy, they really raised the bar when it comes to interior. And that guy raised it from uh, a material perspective this guy as well material but design when it comes to flamboyant design in this segment look at that this is this design is what i mean if it comes from an aston martin or an audi r8 then you'll be like oh yeah that's how they should be or a lamborghini right but in a mass market mid-segment suv you get this wow that is that is really something okay that for so the drive i like the accurate steering the pliancy of it and the soundproofing predominantly the soundproofing of this car is really really good okay and uh power wise um now the crv on paper is more powerful okay it has what somewhat 190 or something and it, that car is fast only if you like the way cvts behave this one has a torque converter same goes the mazda and for a lot of us we like that kind of uh character no it's not character the word shouldn't be character because it's not something special it's something that we're used to so i like how they behave yeah and the sound of the thp engine the 1.6 thp for some reason it sounds better than last time it doesn't sound as good as the PureTech 1.2. That one sounds really good, but it doesn't have that. I have a Mini Cooper back then. I have a Mini Cooper Clubman, and I tell you, this it's the same engine, 1.6 turbo, and that sounds really coarse. It does that really coarse sound. This one doesn't. This one have that little thrum there. It has that, but not not like the PureTech. The PureTech sounds really good. So. Yeah, it's a car with a very good sized engine. It may be an old engine because they were early in downsizing and turbocharging. And uh, I love how the car absorbs and how the car reacts when you turn left to right, the pliancy and all that. So it's a car that drives really well. It can high speed cruise really well from the soundproofing and how the suspension react. And um, transmission mapping, I think slow speeds, I feel it is it, not as smooth as a CVT in slow speed, but that's the reason why CVTs exist, right? Overall, I think this is a very, very compelling player in this segment. The CX-5, it looks really, really good on paper, on pictures. When, when I saw the real car, especially those people who did not buy the red color or the silver color, they bought the, the dark color, right? Because most of us, the design of the CX-5 is in the concave of the sheet metal. But when 
it's the it's, it came from the sheet metal and when you buy a color that is really dark it doesn't show when you buy a light color on the cs5 or the red color you can see the shapes and all that that makes the exterior design ex exciting but this guy here as i showed just now the front headlamps the sides the chrome bars on top all these little details right means that this car when you see the real car there is there are a lot of eye candies and it makes the car look good so yeah overall i think amongst its segment this is the car whereby the car maker put in the most effort when it comes to their own capability they put in like they really stress their brain like how can we make it better you look at the tiguan right they purposely design it so that it doesn't outclass the design of the q5 which the q5 is rather boring in my opinion but what i mean is the car maker itself when you look at the car maker itself they could have reached here but they throttle themselves here so that they can have a facelift or whatever but this guy i think they just they just tried their best they throw everything at it 